Hey guys, welcome to Stock Talk on August 7. Thank you for all of the new subscribers. Welcome to the channel. I'm going to give you guys a first hand thank you. I've been uh, looking at all the subscriptions, so keep that up. Now, guys, the story hasn't changed. You guys can see that my Stock Talk videos have been getting shorter, and it's because the momentum is firmly in the bulls side right now. We're looking at SPY or the spider, which tracks the S&P 500. This is the one day intraday chart. And you guys can see that we pretty much gapped higher overnight once again. And we started the day, I believe the futures were like positive 80 and we you know, pretty much maintained this level the entire day. So I wanna take you guys to the big picture, looking at the one year chart um, because Really, when we're looking at this chart, nothing is wrong with this chart right now. Taking a look at what we're doing right now, you guys can see that the resistance or the all-time high is around 286.90. Uh, and uh, you might not see this on the one-year chart, but if I take you guys to the 180-day chart, you guys can see that it's around 286.90. That's the area where we're looking for some sort of resistance um, and this doesn't have to be that strong of a resistance, but we are looking for some sort of rejection. Perhaps we, you know, rest and go back to the where, to the 20 EMA or the light blue line. But regardless, you guys can see that the bulls are firmly in control of the market and the market has just been going higher and higher and higher for several days. So remember, as the market builds euphoria, right? And we're getting really excited that we're getting to the top. We as investors need to be a little more cautious, right? We need to be careful because once we have that signal change, if we do start reversing, right now we do have, do not have that signal, but once we get that signal, we have to be ready um, just in case the markets do go down. So you guys can see that one area of support is the light blue line. This area is the 283.90. That would be the support area should we start going down. The more near term support has to be around the 20 EMA line, which is slanting higher. That could be situated at 284.70 by tomorrow so that could be the near-term support and there it is possible that we could test that area um, now one thing on the one-year chart you guys can see is we made a gap right we talked about the gap area this area is um, around 285 of course really close to this number so if we do continue moving higher you know we could certainly come back towards this gap, possibly fill it uh, before moving higher. Uh, what does this mean for the markets in the near future, right? Obviously the markets are bullish. Sure, we might have some short-term fluctuations now that I wouldn't be surprised, but we can certainly still edge up towards the uh, major resistance line of 286.90. And I will be looking at this. The markets are getting really interesting as you guys know, because we're nearing the highs. Looking at volatility or TVIX, um, we see volatility. You know, this story, guys, <laughs> this story hasn't changed, right? I've, I've talked about this over and over. Every single day, uh, volatility has been making a newer low. And the story hasn't changed. We're back at a new low at 31.12. I believe we made that after market today. Um, and this one will continue to drop. Uh, as we move on forward, you guys can see after market, we continue dipping lower and that's just pretty much it. There's no reversal in volatility, spies ed edging towards all time highs and therefore we should be bullish. Okay, so before we get on to commodities, thank you everyone for watching these videos and hit that thumbs up button if you like this video, hit that subscribe button to know when I post these videos every day. And with that, Let's continue with 4 slash CL looking at crude oil. Now, crude oil, look at this. I'll show you guys the one year chart. You guys can see this clear that once again, <laughs> you know, don't get fooled that we were going to close above. Look, once again, we did edge higher, crude oil did, but we still managed to close under the 20 EMA line on the yearly chart. So, Right now, the position really hasn't changed in terms of yesterday's analysis or even Friday's analysis. We're maintaining in this level in which we have around a 50% chance that we'll go up and close around 70 over $70 or 50% chance that we could continue on lower into the 6640 mark where we see the um, support area. Regardless, 
If it's a 50-50 chance, we certainly don't have to take that chance. We have better odds in other stocks right now, and therefore, you know, wait for this to play out. You know, one can argue that, oh, you know, we might be starting edging higher because it's a short-term uptrend, but one can argue this is a bear flag pattern playing out to the downside, All right? There's different arguments. So, you know, let the bulls and bears fight it out. In the meantime, we'll wait in the sidelines. Uh, for slash GC. Here's gold uh, on the yearly chart. And we talked about gold holding this horizontal pattern. You guys can see we broke down now. We're doing more horizontal patterns. Another thing that doesn't look good today is we had buyers near the support at 1210. But what happened? We closed within the red candle again. This green candle closed within the red candle again. Man, oh man, we had buyers. We just don't have enough bullish action on um, gold. And... I gotta say, gold is in huge trouble. Look at JNUG today, guys. If you are looking at JNUG, which moves with gold, you guys can see that gold futures went slightly higher. But look at the gold ETF plummeting to 1114, a 180 day low. That, guys, this does not look at all. I'm gonna zoom out to the three year chart. And you guys can see what is happening now, right? On the three-year chart, we have a sell signal that's already coming up. So uh, look for lower prices for gold. In the meantime, um, you know the U.S. dollar continues to look strong, so we'll just keep it at that. Um, all right, and oh, guys, natural gas, of course, natural gas. Here we are, one year chart. Nothing has changed from yet. So guys, when I talk about these trends, you know, you certainly don't have to invest in them, but I need you guys to, if you're in the course, uh, you know, when the course comes out, even if you're just watching this channel, I need you guys to recognize what is potentially going higher, what's an uptrend. I know sometimes it's hard to find good patterns, but certainly we talked about UGAZ when it reversed at the support area. We continue to talk about it in terms of verifying the 180 day 20 EMA line, right? We talked about it here. We talked about this candle where it was a reversal candle right here. And now natural gas continues to progress higher. So, you know, these are just concepts that are certainly investable if you want to go into it but i just need you guys to kind of pay attention look at um ugaz which follows natural gas right where did we we actually busted through this resistance at 6370 that is actually quite surprising but one thing to note is um you guys can see this gap fill area from here to here this area is the area of resistance so it doesn't have to be that line but we have an area of resistance we close right at the resistance today that is just something to keep in mind especially when we're significantly over the 20 ema line you might be you know if you were in natural gas down here or over here you would have gotten around four percent or more by now but you could think of you know perhaps a little bit of profit taking that's certainly not bad if you've made if you guys got in at this area you would have made Take a look, guys. Guys, I'm getting a little excited because 7%, okay? You would have made 7%. At this point, you could have do, done some profit taking as we're near the resistance. That is how we invest. And guys, we're looking good on natural gas. Really nothing wrong with the chart for natural gas. <laughs> okay, so now before we go on further, um, I wanna show you guys one ticker that is Tesla. So Tesla came out with news of possibly going private now um you know going back to its state of mind where uh you know the the earnings and won't influence the emotions of the investors and you know maintaining the quality of the company uh or so what elon musk posted on his blog so um you guys can see that you know tesla has broken out of its uh bull flag pattern i'm gonna show you guys on the three-year weekly chart Guys, this is a bull flag pattern in the making, right? Uh, and you guys can see that it's breaking out. And it, it could be, you know, it's definitely partially propagated by the news today. So looking at intraday, you guys can see that it was actually halted uh, during midday. But then um, we managed to pop to 387 before selling off. Now, what does that mean for Tesla? 
right? It's breaking out. That is certainly one that we have to be interested in. It's breaking out of its bull flag pattern. And this one certainly can go higher, in my opinion, to $400, possibly even capped at 420 because that's what um, uh, Elon Musk and talked about offerings on that so at 420 so uh, this is one to keep an eye on i think it was just very interesting that went up 11 percent today and now you guys can see after market we're pretty much at 380 another trend i want to talk to you guys about before i get to your ticker is iq and iq is one that we've been constantly monitoring not only because of its trend but also because of its downgrades that it broke the support but I want to take you guys and show you that IQ on the 180-day chart did break above its resistance at 29.61. And now it's above the 20 EMA line and maintained its 20 EMA line surprisingly <laughs> today. So um, this is one that is interesting. The only thing I want to be cautious about is look at this lower high pattern if you guys are in IQ. Um, and then, you know, just want to be careful. Lower high possibly a lower low pattern i'm not going to draw that in right now but you guys can see that if we do manage to get to 3189 we have several resistance areas for iq just keep that in mind if you're in that one taking a look here at your first ticker which is crox thank you for submitting it on facebook and crox so we look like it looks like we have earnings that resulted in a decline interesting Okay, so this is interesting in that you're looking at the 180-day chart, and what do you guys see? You know, think about what you're seeing right now. Okay, you should be seeing that upon earnings, in the previous case, we landed at the 200-period moving average, and we've recovered significantly higher. And this is Crocs, so interesting. <laughs> Here, you guys can see that we pulled under the 200-period moving average, and we managed to get pulled up. So we actually closed above this 4 hour count, above the 200 period moving average. Let's look at the one year chart. Hmm. Yeah, so that is certainly a pretty, wow, I didn't, actually, guys, I didn't know that Crocs was doing this well. Um, hold on. <laughs> Let's see. Wow, okay, that's interesting. So yeah, Crocs looks um, very nice. And one thing you guys know is on the 180 day chart, we were holding over the moving average. So if you wanna invest when we hit the moving average, that's perfectly fine because you know where your stop loss is. This is a good trend. Um, nothing wrong with this one, good call out. I like it, Crocs, C-R-O-X. Actually, let me put this one in and I'm gonna remove X, which is the one that we talked about in the past. And then I wanna just tell you guys, box guys, this is one that someone called out a couple days ago. And this goes to the fact to show that, you know, we as a community do better in trading in identifying specific tickers than ourselves, right? And someone, I think one of you guys called out Box, you know, very intelligently last, you know, last week. And you guys can see how we formed a tail candle at the 20 EMA line and look at this up move this week, right? This is a 4% so far up move. Not to say that you should get into box right now, but I'm just saying that people are pointing out good things to find um, and such that uh, can, you know, finding good patterns can make you money. All right, C-R-O-N. Yeah, so um, we looked at CRO in, in many times and we talked about this wedge pattern. You guys can see this wedge pattern. Uh, I did this on the one year chart and that we wedge downwards and therefore we can't really revisit this, especially given that earnings is in a week. We can't revisit this. This broke down from a previous trend. It's not carrying any of the moving averages, nor is it above any moving average. Have to forego this one. So, Yarvin USLV. USLV, this is silver, continues to decline. You guys can see that we have gold and silver just declining and plummeting. There's no end in sight for these commodities and therefore um, we have to not take a trade in this case. There is no sign of a reversal. As a matter of fact, I can argue why <laughs> during the trading day do we are we selling off? 
why are we continually selling off during the trading day? There has to be something that we ask ourselves because that is not normal, not a good sign at least for a reversal pattern. Um, Google, all right, moviegoer, thanks for that comment, Google. So Google has had a tremendous run um, after it broke out. You guys can see that we broke out, retested the support, and then that was the confirmation for it to go higher. Now, the one thing is, I like this trend. It is on an uptrend. Today, we managed, you guys can see, we formed this kind of strange candle right here. So we pulled higher, came a bit a little lower, but we did gap higher. So there's really nothing wrong with this trend. The only thing I would ask you is, Yes, the 20 EMA is pointing up, but is this the best time to get into Google? You know, that's up to you. I think the best time would be around the 20 EMA or 1238 if it comes down around that area. Uh, but if you want to get in, you surely can, especially for a long term hold, long term hold. You might not make money immediately, but if you're holding it long term, it's a good one. All right, Disney. Um, so. Disney, oh, we have earnings. Canine, can you please look at, well, that's interesting, okay. So we have earnings and it looks like we made, um, pretty much ended where we started. <laughs> so that's actually not a very bad sign. Um, the only thing right now is Hold on, one, it's training at 116.75, which is right here. We went to 117.90. The only thing you guys can see is um, we made a tail candle today. So that could be signaling a short-term downtrend. Um, Disney, you guys can see, um, you know, has broken out. You guys can see how it broke out over its uh, resistance area as well. Uh, this is signaling a short-term downtrend, so perhaps we might land ourselves around 114, at which point you could take a position. I think this is one that you could revisit possibly in a day or two, uh, possibly three or four days. Um, if you want to take a position now, you could. Uh, it's just right now a little bit overextended. Draxon, uh, 11 minutes and 10 seconds was uh, yesterday's video. I feel I didn't get enough bang for my buck today. Hmm. Where was that buck? I'm kidding. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for your comment. Yeah, we looked at Tesla earlier, so I just wanted to point that one out. If you got into Tesla position, look at where we are now. And this is one we've been eyeballing for a long time for Tesla because we were wondering um, at what point were we going to break out the, the bull flag pattern. It seems like we have, so. Um, all right, that is it. The last thing I want to talk to you guys about, and this is just stuff that I'm coming up with, is um, NVIDIA. Guys, NVIDIA, I want to show you guys the, uh, let me show you guys the one year, actually, let me show you the three year chart really quick. Um, I want to pay you guys attention to NVIDIA because can you guys see NVIDIA where we consolidated for four weeks and all of a sudden we're mush picking, uh, pushing higher? Earnings is coming up soon, but this push higher is very much warranted, right? Look how we consolidated here, pushing higher. Look how we consolidating here, now pushing higher. Food for thought. All right, that's it for this stock talk. I'll see you guys tomorrow, uh, Wednesday for another one. Hope you guys are enjoying this trading day. Um, if you're making money, you know, continue on doing so. You're doing a great job. If you're not, think about how you guys can change your, um, you know, trading habits so that you can start um, going on the positive side. I think it's okay if you're losing money. There's nothing, you know, wrong, but you would want to think about how you can improve and change. So, all right. See you guys tomorrow and happy trading.